Well, hello, hello, welcome back. We've got two big topics tonight. One is the binomial theorem, which we've seen quite a bit of on our Grizzlies every single week here. And two is sigma notation. And we're going to really practice sigma notation without the calculator. All right, so I know you have that advantage if you have that updated calculator, but we're going to focus on not using it, especially for our short answer. So stick with me, take good notes, and we'll check them tomorrow. All right, so diving right in. Our goal is to expand the quantity 2x squared minus 3y to the fifth power. Now, this is kind of a daunting task, and it taste, takes a little while, but I just want to remind you that this formula is on our formula sheet. You do not have to memorize it. It is on the formula sheet. And I have a clip here of the binomial theorem itself, and that's what we're going to use. Now, again, you don't have to memorize anything. It's all staring at you. It says take your a plus b to the n power. Okay, so in my case, I have 2x squared minus 3y raised to the fifth. So let me just be clear. My a in this case is 2x squared. My b is negative 3y. And my n is that fifth power. So I'm going to have a hard time squeezing all of mine on one line, but I'm going to go through and, and do my best here for you. So it says start with n, c, 0. So again, my n is 5, c, 0. Okay, it says take that a value, which we said in our case was 2x squared. Notice I'm substituting with parentheses raised to the n. Then take your b value, which is negative 3y. Notice I took that negative in parentheses raised to the 0. Okay, then you'll notice the most important plus sign. Then you just keep going. Now it says take nc1. So 5c1, your a value, 2x squared, to the n minus 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4. Your b value, negative 3y, strictly to the first. Okay, so I'm going to let you pause it and finish out the rest of this. Again, this should all be on one line. Um, just take note that I should have a plus sign next. And like I said, pause it and just finish out the rest. All right, so hopefully yours looks like mine. And again, I just followed this formula that's given. Don't memorize it. Now, here's the deal. You've got to take each piece and clean it up. Notice it's this piece times this piece times this piece. All right, so I'm going to go through it nice once and slow and see what we get here. So 5C0, just throwing that in my calculator, I got a 1, parentheses, times 2X squared to the fifth. 2 to the 5th is 32. x squared to the 5th, power to a power we've said a million times this month, is to multiply. And anything to the 0 is a 1. Okay, so now I'm going to clean that term up. And my first term, 1 times 32 times 1, should be 32x to the 10th. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my next term. Okay. 5c1, throwing it in my calculator. 5, 2x squared to the 4th, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16, x to the 8th, and negative 3y to the 1st is just negative 3y. Carefully multiply those terms, 5, 16, and negative 3 gets me a negative 240, x to the 8th, y. Alright, get the next term, I'm going to box it in. Uh, 5c2 gets me a 10, and we're just going to kind of write this off to the side here. I've got a 10, uh, 2x squared cubed, 2 cubed is 8, x to the 6th, negative 3 squared is a positive 9, y squared. Again, carefully multiply those, and I'm going to get, oops, I'm just going to put my work over here. Uh, positive 720x to the 6th y squared. Okay, so at this point, I want you to pause it, figure out the next three terms, and then compare and see if we get the same thing. So I hope I did my math correctly, and you can double check it there. Um, again, I just figured each of these out, carefully multiplied them together, and I've got this whole line here. Now you'll notice I don't have any like terms, so my final answer should have six pieces. 32x to the 10th, 
minus 240x to the eighth y plus this amount minus this plus this minus this. And again, none of them are like terms, so I have to leave it like this. Now in our next example, they don't want the whole thing. They gave us a very easy description, and they just said find the third term. So notice, I'm going to use the binomial theorem that's given on my sheet and count out to the third term. So I'm going to start with my n is 9. Okay, that's the exponent. My a is the first term, and my b is the second term. All right, so let's just first by identifying those. Okay, so I've got my a, I've got my b, and I've got my n. Now we'll just follow the formula. nc0, 9c0, a, which is my x to the n, b, my 3y to the 0. Okay, and it wants the third term, so I'm going to count out until I get to the third term. So that's 1, 2, 3. Then I'm going to have 9c1, oh, there's a plus sign, of course, x to the 8th, 3y to the 1st, plus 9c2, x to the 7th, 3y squared. Okay, and I just want the third term. I don't care about anything but this third term. So I can ignore these, and I just need to evaluate this term. So 9c2, I don't have a calculator. I'm trying to do this in my head real quickly. I think you get 36. Double check me if I'm wrong. x to the 7th, and then 3y squared becomes 9y squared. And again, it's each of those terms, so I'm putting them in parentheses, and now I'm going to multiply. So as I clean that up, I've got 36 times 9, which I think is 324, x to the 7th, y squared. And it just wants that term. So there you have it. We had a single term, and we're good to move on. Let's try one more example. All right, so last example here. Find the coefficient of the fourth term. Now, I just want you to highlight that word coefficient. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But my goal, obviously, is to get that fourth term. All right, so use your expansion. My a is negative 2x. My b is negative 3y squared. And my n is 5. And again, I'm just following that formula uh, from our formula sheet. So it starts with nc0, so 5c0, a to the n, b to the 0. Okay, and you want the fourth term. So again, pause it, and let's just make sure we can get the same fourth term. Pause it, see what you get. So I've written mine out. I've underlined four terms here. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the final term that I want. And now I just need to evaluate this term. So 5c3, I believe, is 10. Negative 2x squared becomes a positive 4x squared. Okay, so that's my first term, my second term. And negative 3 cubed becomes a negative 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Y to the 6. Okay, so again, I just have to carefully multiply now. And I believe that gets me 1080, uh, negative 1080, X to the six, second, Y to the 6. Now, if it wants that term, I'm done. So I want you to box this in, and I want you to say this is the fourth term. But they use the word coefficient. And the word coefficient just describes the numbers before the variable. So in this case, the coefficient is negative 1,080. All right, so two different terms we have to watch for. Term wants the whole thing. Coefficient wants just the number in front once you're done. All right, so now my goal is to switch gears on you and talk about sigma notation. Now, some of us are phenomenal at this if we can type it in the calculator. But I want you to stress no calculator. And I think we've seen that on the short answers, where you can't use your calculator. Certainly to check you can, but to actually evaluate you cannot. So I want to be clear on where these numbers come from. This is the si symbol for sigma, and sigma is the Greek word for add. All right, so you are adding each term. Basically, our bottom number is going to tell us where to start. Our top number is going to tell us where to end. And you're just going to carefully plug these in. So let's start with m equals 2. I'm going to replace m with 2. So I'm going to get 2 substituting with parentheses squared minus 1. OK, 
Okay. Sigma, again, means to add. Big plus sign. Now, after you plug in 2, the next number you plug in is 3. 3 squared minus 1. Big plus sign. 4 squared minus 1. Another big plus sign. And we're ending with 5. So 5 squared minus 1. Okay, and again, on the short answer, you have to show this work. You can't just throw it in your calculator. Now we'll just quickly evaluate each term. 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3 plus 3 squared is 9 minus 1 is 8 plus 16 minus 1 is 15 plus 25 minus 1 is 24. And lastly, I just want to add each of those terms up and I'll have my final answer. 8 plus 3 plus 15 plus 24 gets me a total of oops, 50. Okay, so notice it wasn't difficult whatsoever. And again, a lot of you have the new updated calculator where it's easy to cheat, but we have to show work in this non-calculator section. Let's try a few others. Here's a great multiple choice question. Mrs. Hill asked her students to express the sum of 1, 3, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 up to 39 using sigma notation. Four different student answers are given, which is correct. Okay, so again, I would start, I think the easiest way to do it is just to start with choice 1. Plug in the number 1. So I've got 2 minus 1 is 1. Do you like the first term? Does it match with what we want? I'd say yes. Plus, let's plug in the next term. After 1 would be 2. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 would be 3. Plus 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1, which would be 5. I'm feeling it's looking good. Now, don't jump to conclusion. Notice 1 looks very similar to option 4. Let's think about what we want our last number to be. My last number has to be a 39. And what number are you plugging in last? 20. 2 times 20 is 40. Minus 1 gets you 39. So we got pretty darn lucky that we got the pattern on the first try. I just want to show to you that, you know, it might look like it's working on some other ones, but in fact it's wrong. If I plug in 2 here, I get a 1. And isn't that what I want again? So that kind of looks like it's working. When I plug in a 3, 3 minus 1 is, I get a 2. So right there on the second term, that one fails. Okay? Now, again, I just wanted to compare 1 to 4 since they were the same equation, 2x minus 1. Look what happens when you plug that last number of 39 in. Okay, if I plug 39 in, 39 times 2 is 78 minus 1 is 76. Do you want 76 as your last term? I think not. So pay close attention to the details. All right, try this one on your own. Um, again, you can easily start by substituting that number in and seeing which pattern works. Let me give you another example. We could simply write the sum on our own. If I were to write the sum, I would say this is arithmetic, so a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the difference times n minus 1. a sub 1 in this case is the first term, which is 5. Each one looks like I'm adding on 2 times n minus 1. If I clean that up, that's 2n minus 2 which is 2n plus 3. So I'm looking for 2n plus 3, which it looks like it's this one, starting at 1 and going to 20. Well, let's verify. If I plug that first one in, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. If I plug a 2 in, four times, or 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay, so I get the feeling it's working. Now let's plug that last number in. 20 times 2 is 40, plus 3 gets me 43. So it checks and it works. That's the one we're looking for. All right, in this next example, I want you to make a table like I have here. So pause it if you need to. And I've got three very similar problems. Look at the difference between these two. And this is one of our weaknesses. This equation, it goes from 1 to 3 of negative n squared plus 1. This equation is almost the same. It goes from 1 to 3 of negative n squared plus 1, but there's a 4 in front. And this one has a 4 plus 2, same equation. All right, so we're going to go through the first one slow and hopefully be able to pick up the pace on the next two. So again, I'm going to start by plugging in the number 1. 
Now, we've all formed for this on the past test or two. Who is that squared sitting on? Is it negative n squared, or is it the quantity negative n squared? I would say those are very different. Who is this squared strictly sitting on? I would say just the negative, I'm sorry, just the n, and the term is negative. Okay, it does not have parentheses. So when I substitute this in, it is negative 1 squared plus 1 plus negative 2 squared plus 1 plus negative 3 squared plus 1. And now we're going to quickly evaluate each of those. 1 squared is 1. A negative makes it a negative 1. And a negative 1 plus 1, of course, is 0. 2 squared is 4. And the negative in front makes it negative 4. Plus 1 is negative 3. And 3 squared is 9. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. So I would say this has a sum of negative 11. Now, what is the difference between that one and this one next to it? All right, and that's our key. It basically is, if that 4 wasn't there, you would just do what we did. But now, read it. It says 4 what? What symbol is next to things when they're just sitting next to each other? What operation is that? That's definitely multiply. And I want to be clear, it's not multiply each term. It's multiply 4 times that answer. Okay, now we already did the work. We know that answer is negative 11, and I'm just doing 4 times that answer. So I would say my answer is negative 44. Now, be even more careful with the last example there. It says, find that sum, which again, we already have the answer. In order of operations, it says 4 plus 2, and we know that answer is negative 11. Okay, order of operations. Are you going to add the 4 plus 2 or multiply this first? Hopefully you're saying multiply. That's 4 minus 22, which gets me negative 18. Okay, so be, pay very, very close attention to what operation you're doing. Notice it was not four times each of these. It was get this answer, multiply by four. Get this answer, multiply by two, and add four. All right, well, we've made it to that last example. It says express the sum using sigma notation. Okay, and remember, sum is sigma. That symbol means to add. That is our rule for sum, for adding. So very simple. All I have to do is figure out what the rule is. So am I arithmetic or geometric? And I would definitely say we're arithmetic. So a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the difference times n minus 1. a sub n equals, I would say my a sub 1, my first term is 7, plus the difference between each term is 7 times n minus 1. Clean that bad boy up a little bit, and I've got a sub n equals uh, that's 7n minus 7. Uh, so those 7s would cancel, and I think a sub n should just equal 7n. So that's what goes right here. Okay, now, this is very simple. This is what you get when n equals 1. I guess I should use a lowercase n. This represents the first term. Check it. Verify it. What happens when you plug in a 1? You should get the number 7. Then plug in a 2. You should get 14. Plug in a 3. 21. Now you've got to figure out what number do you plug in to get 105. Well, it's very simple. 7n equals 105. Okay, just set your equation equal to term, that term. Divide by 7. And n equals 15. Therefore, my last term up top better be a 15. And again, double check it. 15 times 7 gets me 105. Well, hopefully we had a nice review of the binomial expansion and sigma notation. Uh, so take your time, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.